let's take a look at some uh, hammer-ons here and how to play them as cleanly as possible. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the fourth and third strings just kind of for these exercises. I think I'll add in a second string somewhere in here, but I'm um, just trying to keep the exercise simple so it's nothing you have to try too hard to memorize and you can just really focus on getting a clean sound. So I'm just going to hammer on that fourth string going zero two and the third string zero two. Right, so that'd be two hammer-ons there. And I'm hitting those with my thumb and index on my right hand. Uh, you can just use your thumb if you want. Um, I actually, uh, I do use my thumb and index um, more uh, than just my thumb because I do a little bit of muting with my right hand as I'm doing this. Um, but the muting also happens quite a bit with the left hand, which you probably already know, but these fingers behind the bar, you know, they got to be kind of hitting the string at the same time as your slide is. What that does is, it, is it's kind of um, keeping the strings from ringing together. Um, killing out a lot of the overtones mostly though. And the one thing I noticed with my right hand, um, and it's something that I want to believe just kind of happens over time, the more you play your right hand will start doing these things. Um, but it, it's also something you can practice. I wouldn't overanalyze it and stress out about it too much though. But it's, um, as I hit that four string, I noticed that my index pick is resting on that third string. And I also think that that's really kind of eliminating any little vibrations or anything that can happen on that third string. And then when I hit that third string and do the hammer on with my index, my thumb automatically goes and rests on the fourth string, kind of keeping that string from vibrating as well. Um, again, you know, that's something that just kind of happened um, for me, and it's just, you know, a lot of repetition with my right hand. Um, I think it also has to do with just kind of, you know, if you got some extra sounds that you don't like, um, just your, just, you know, telling yourself like, all right, I got to eliminate these sounds over time, your hand kind of figures that out. But that certainly is something you could practice, um, but I wouldn't, don't let it ruin, <laughs> ruin your journey, you know? It's an important part to kind of clean everything up. Maybe you're just kind of make yourself a little more conscious of it, but you know, don't let it ruin your whole, your whole journey, like I said. Um, right, so that would be the hammer-ons, and I would just do that really slow. Um, Doing everything with a metronome makes everything better. Um, but yeah, I would just kind of practice that and then you can kind of, with your metronome, you can kind of speed it up as well. Uh, but the, let's go ahead and look at the pull-offs now. I'm gonna go two zero on the third string and two zero on the fourth string. As I was doing that, I noticed I am, I'm actually making more noise by having my index kind of hit that third string. Um, so it's just something my right hand kind of does where I think I'm muting, but maybe I'm actually making more noise and not, not realizing it. But it's all all pretty minimal sounds. So, yeah, with the pull off, what you're doing is again you got these fingers back here, kind of making sure you're muting those strings. That's the most important part. And I do have the bar kind of tilted, where I'm only playing the specific string that I'm uh, picking. 
and then I'm kind of lifting up and I'm, I'm snapping the bar a little bit. But I'm not doing it, you know, my left hand is as relaxed as possible. You know, you can't do a thing where you just kind of come straight back. I'm kind of doing a little bit of an in-between. I'm lifting off a little bit and I'm uh, pulling back on the string. So kind of a little bit of a, an in-between of lifting straight up and then uh, not lifting up at all. And you can hear I get an extra noise that's not that pleasant if I just pull straight back. Um, so I, I do lift off a little bit as I'm pulling back. So again, you'll want to practice those really slow and kind of get a clean sound. You know, make sure you're muting wherever possible. Right, so I'd practice those kind of separately um, and then I can combine the two. Kind of back and forth like that. Um, I will also add in like a hammer on pull off where, I, where I'm going to get three notes with one pick. You know, nice and slow. And then you can speed it up. Um, and then kind of this last thing that I do it kind of helps out just to kind of keep a continuous loop going when you're doing kind of your hammer on and then coming back with pull offs is I'm going to add in that second string. And that kind of creates a nice pattern that I kind of loop over and over again just to kind of keep something really continuous. That, yeah, again, that's hammer-ons on the way up, zero, two, zero, two. And then I hit that second string with my middle, and then I come back with my pull-off, two, zero on the third string. And then I guess kind of end on the second fret of the four string. And then I got to start it over, right? So I'm kind of cheating myself out of a pull-off, but, you know, whatever. And that's also a good pattern that you can move to uh, other strings if you if you got a particular scale pattern that you're working on. Uh, like a popular one is this uh, zero two zero one zero two. Just a nice little pattern on the dobro, but you could practice that same pattern with. Right, so I'm going to take that and do it on strings th three through one. Right, that same little triangle pattern happens on uh, string six through four. As well, uh, you could do from the fifth string through the third string. Right, I'm just kind of making a, a fun exercise out of it there. Um, but it's cool to kind of sit in one area and just loop it over and over again until you really get comfortable. Focusing on getting a clean sound, so you, you know, starting slow is extremely important. Again, these fingers behind the bar are key. A little bit of muting with my right hand that, that I, I don't really notice. Um, you know, but if you got a little extra sound, you might check your right hand and see if you can, if you rest uh, a pick or, or your thumb pick on some strings that are surrounding the string that you're hitting. 
um, that might eliminate uh, a little extra sound um, that you can't figure out. Um, but I would say most of it for me is these fingers behind the bar. You know, it's just perfectly, it's, it's, they're almost part of the bar. My bar, my, they, they just don't move behind the bar. They're, wherever the bar goes up and down, those fingers are just kind of locked into a certain position. All right, so I hope that kind of helps clean up your hammer-ons and pull-offs, or um, if you're brand new to it, it kind of shows you how to do them. Uh -huh.